I want you to give all the praise to the Lord, all the glory to the Lord. Give your best clap offering to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I want to thank you all for your faithfulness, for being here, not for anybody, but for the Lord. Because we we came here not uh, with any reason, but the only reason is we love the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you excited? Are you ready to receive your blessings? Hallelujah. So I need you to bow your heads a little bit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that is with us today. And we pray that you would bless your word, O oh God. We pray that you would uh, engrave your words inside our hearts, Father. And let your word, Father God, uh, bear fruit inside of us. Father, bear so much fruit, O oh God. And let your word... Uh, be in in our everyday lives oh god help us to apply this in our everyday lives help these words to change our lives and our perspective lord god in this world father god we thank you for your presence i pray that you would hide your servant at your back you only be glorified you only be seen and you only be exalted in the mighty name of jesus take charge father in jesus name amen, amen. So I was blessed last night for everything that is happening inside the church. I was blessed because the Lord is really moving. The Lord is really uniting every one of us. The Lord is making every way possible for victorious and as a glorious church uh, until the coming of the Lord. So I want to thank God and I want to thank every one of you for supporting on not only this ministry but your faithfulness to God and one day you will you will receive your reward of your faithfulness amen. amen thank you thank you thank you Lord Jesus for everything so as I have heard in the song and as we are united in one spirit the message is my only refuge amen. okay so who is our only refuge it is Jesus. Amen. So we, as, 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 as the center of our heart, God, or specifically Jesus has to be there. Because we cannot say God, because the world will know that that is their God. We are serving the big G. The big God, not the small God. So every time you write, everywhere, anywhere, you write your God, big letter G. Amen. Big letter J and big letter H for the Holy Spirit and for Jesus and for our living God. So our text is very beautiful and, and it hits me every time the Lord gives me word. It hits me first. So because when I'm training in, in my life girl training, I was so fearful. I, I, I fear water so much. I fear, I fear the deep water. But God ha has helped me in the midst of the deep water to overcome water. Because many, many of our brethren gave me words that even though you are in the fire, you will not burn. When, even when you are in the deep water, you will not drown. Amen. So our verse for today is Psalms 46, verse 1 to 2. God is our refuge a very present help in trouble therefore we will not fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the sea do we fear something because the psalmist says therefore we will not fear anything we will not fear anything but in the end of times you see it, everywhere there are famines, especially in the Philippines, the, ty the typhoon is really, uh, has stolen many lives. The typhoon has stolen many lives. The war has stolen many lives. So in reality, if we apply the psalmist as a human, we fear, right? Even a little bit, we fear. How, how about when we know that the earth, because Second Peter, somewhere there, it says the earth will melt. 
in the future? How about when we already know that the earth is melting? Do, will we fear? Yes, I, as a human, for me especially, I will fear. But if we hold this promise from the Lord, though the earth be removed and be cast down to the sea, or though the earth melts, we will not fear. We have to hold this promise because God will not break any of His promise. And if we hold on to the promise, we will get all the benefits of that promise. Amen? So God is our refuge. Last, last night, it, it is connected to this message because uh, in the prayer meeting, we talked about Psalms 91, verse 1 to 16. But the very important verse there is uh, verse 1 and 2. Can you, can you put it, brother? Psalms 91, verse 1 and 2. When we know this secret, all the descending uh, verses are the results of that secret. So what is the secret? This is the secret. This, when, when I was a baby Christian, uh, maybe five years ago, when, when I first time converted, being born again, this is the first verse that I memorized. Psalms 91 verse 1 to 16. Psalms 91 verse 1 to 16. And I, my Bible before is NIV. So it is easy for me to understand. But this is KJV. He that dwelleth in, this, in the shelter of the Most High. I, I'll, I'll make it lighter for you. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, you are my, you are my strength. You are my refuge. In you, I will trust. In you only, I will trust. Can you say that? In you only, I will trust. Will you trust your seatmate? No. Because Psalm 91 says, In God only, I will trust. Okay? So, this, the results of this, these verses are the next verses. So, I will give you that assignment to read that at home so that you will know the benefits when you dwell under the shelter of the Most High, like a chicken, like an eagle or a chicken that uh, 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 shadowed his cheeks, her, her cheeks. You know, when the chicken put her wings under her, her cheeks, the, the, the small chicken. <laughs> I remember a joke in Arabic, but I'll tell you later. <laughs> so, the, the chicken will not be hurt the chicks the small chicks will not be hurt will not be moved because they are they are in peace that somebody will protect them somebody will take care of them this is our god this is our living god so this is uh this this verse is talking about god's divine protection under the umbrella of God. Sometimes we don't know that we are not already under the umbrella of God. How that happens? When we disobey. God is not moving, but you are moving outside the protection and the blessings of God. There is still blessings, but the fullness of that blessing is only under the shelter of the Most High. Only inside His presence. Amen. Amen. So, sometimes we choose our way. Not our refuge, our, our God's way. Have you heard the word refugee? Refugee is always used in the war. That you... you Refugee means a person who escaped from their own country because or for political, religious, or economic reasons because of war. Refugee are those persons who went out from 
from their country. Many times, we are God's refugee. We always, many times, we, we do, we always uh, went out. We always go out of the presence of God. We always go out of the umbrella. For example, it is raining. Raining. Raining like, you know, snow. If you are under the umbrella, the snow, this is the, the uh, arrows of the enemy. The arrows of the enemy will not hit you. But when you go outside, will it hit you? Of course, it will hit you. Amen. So being a refugee, many times we went out of the presence of God because of disobedience or delayed obedience. But if we don't go out, whatever it is, whatever it takes, when we obey the Lord, the fullness of His blessings is there under the umbrella, under God's protection. So that's your assignment, Psalms 91, verse 1 to 16. 1 to 2, the results are 3 to 16. Okay, now I'm going to explain to you, because refuge is a little bit, you know, <laughs> hard to digest. Refuge is biblically, the biblical definition is safety, a safe place, a shelter from danger or hardship. Act of turning to something or someone for assistance or security. So getting relief from something or uh, someone. Who do you turn to? Or the question is, what is your refuge? When you are in trouble, when you are when you are in trouble, when you have a problem, whom do you call? Who do you turn to? I remember in, in, in our training. We believe that the heart is on the left side. Amen? Amen? We believe that, but that's not true. The heart is in the center of our chest and it leans on the left. It's in the center. So the enemy always hits the center so he would replace uh, what God in, is, is in, inside of us. So God wants to be in the center of our being. And the enemy always hits the heart. Just means the emotions, our emotions. He always hits that. That's why uh, we need to die in this, in this heart, flesh heart. In this heart of flesh. Because we are not living in the flesh, we are living in the spirit. So we have to die. So anything that the enemy, that the devil would, would, would uh, throw in your heart, in your flesh, you will not be hurt. You will not be hurt because uh, God wants us to live in spirit. When you die, will you feel something? When somebody slap you, will you still feel something? No, because you are dead. When somebody tells you uh, painful words and you, you are dead, Will, will it still hurt you? No, because you are dead. Amen? So without uh, further ado, I will continue. So everybody, we all need a refuge. We all need a refuge. I'll repeat that. Nobody, nobody in this place or nobody in this world doesn't need somebody to go on to. Somebody to turn to. Okay, but uh, just the just the problem is just we turn to wrong refuge. This is our only problem. But uh, I will tell you the definition of refuge in Hebrew. This is what the refuge or our God. God is my only refuge, your only refuge, and our only refuge. This is what God did. Uh, does to us when we choose uh, this is what refuge does in our lives this is what it means so I'm gonna tell you some six uh, reasons but it will just be fast so that you will understand the real meaning of God being a refuge okay 
Number one, to cover. Being, God being a refuge is covering us. Meaning, He is being compassionate to us. He regard us. He spare us. God being our covering is like wall. Wall. You know wall will not stand alone. But wall are united, binded. Binded. God supports that wall. God is our support. Jesus is our support. Just like uh, a house. A house there is roof. The spiritual roof are our prayer so the enemy will not hit us. The walls are, you know, some, some of the gifts and the leaders and the pillars, the five gifts, five-fold ministry, the door, the, the usher, uh, uh, the ushering uh, represents the door, and inside that are the flocks of God. So the wall, the one who binds the wall is God. The one who supports the wall so it would be united is God. But as a whole, as the church of God, we are also uh, used by God to support each other. When somebody is weak, and for example, you see this church is weak. You see this church is weak in this area, in this area, in this area, and you are the one who saw it. You're the one who saw it. Meaning, God is talking to you. You feel that area of weaknesses. If you think that you, God gave you strength in that area. So it's like that. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 to 10. When we are weak, God is our support. God is our... Uh, weakness is perfected in Christ's strength. If, if we will uh, put that... that uh, if we will put that verse, 2 Corinthians, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For the power, for my power, Jesus' power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will not boast all more gladly, I will boast all more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, and I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardship, persecution, calamities. For when I am weak, then Christ's strength will be there. You want Christ's strength be with you? Admit that you are weak in that, that you need God's grace. God said, my grace is sufficient, is enough for you. Amen. Okay, second. My hiding, hiding place or bosom. When I was in my part-time job, there are many, many children, all different attitudes, all, you know, hard-headed. I thank God for the patience that He has given me. Everyone will, will ask somebody, if you give somebody sticker, those will, some, some children will ask sticker. If you fix somebody's hair, you have to fix all their hair. So, one, one child cried. One child cried. Because somebody like hit him, somebody hit him. So I put him on my bosom. I hide him on my, in my embrace, and so he stopped crying. God is your hiding place. When you are, when you are wounded, when when you felt something hit you, when when you have this all the troubles, when you have problems. You, you call your refuge. You call God. And God will put you under, uh, over His bosom. And He will embrace you. He will comfort you. Okay, the wall of the house. This is just like the wall, each wall of the house. It means God hides us. This wall hides us. You know when you go inside the house, you are hidden. When you go inside uh the presence of God, you are hidden. Hidden from what? Hidden from what? You are hidden from undesirable people. You are hidden on what the people will tell you. But inside of that, God will cherish you. Inside that wall, inside that wall of God's protection, your hiding place, God will cherish you. God will comfort you if you choose Him as your refuge. John 14, 26 says, 
14.26, please. God, uh, John 14.26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, from the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So He will teach you. Maybe it hurts you, but He will teach you. Maybe it's undesirable in your hearing, but He will comfort you. He is a comforter. There is no other com comforter, not your seatmate, not your boyfriend, not your husband, not anybody, not your children, or not your colleagues. There is only one comforter. As the Bible says, the Holy Spirit is our comforter. Okay. Third, surround and gather. This I am telling you the meaning so you would deeply understand what God as a refuge, refuge uh, does into our lives and if, if God could, could change our way of thinking, what is refuge, you would live into it. You would live how, how the Lord wants you to understand His words. So surround and gather. If, if you see in your country the president, he will always be surrounded by convoys. See, he is always protected. Or, or the, just like the eagle that I told you, he will put all his uh, chicks under her care, under her wings, so nobody could touch, could touch uh, her children. Or a house that's surrounded by a gate, by gates, a house that's surrounded by gates. If you go inside those, that house, you are surrounded. You are safe there. So you are surrounded by God. Psalms 125 and 2. The Lord surrounds His people. The Lord, I just want you to know that the Lord surrounds you. This is for His people. The Lord surrounds His people. Four. Our refuge is our chief, an exalted one, a prince, a ruler. Jesus, the head of the church, is our refuge. The leader of a family, tribe, or people who carries the burden of the people. This is Jesus. Jesus can carry your burden. He said, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Amen. Have you experienced having problems? Of course, every one of us. So we experience all these problems. But have you experienced now you have a problem? You think and think and think and think of your problem. Tonight you cannot sleep. Because of your thinking of your problem. Then tomorrow when you wake up, you pray. Yes, you pray. Tomorrow when you wake up, you're still thinking of your problem. You're still thinking of your problem. And then at the night, you still cannot sleep because you pray, Lord, I give you my problem. But you wake up, you're still thinking of your problem. Have you experienced that? It is because you don't really give to your refuge your problem. That's why it's keep on repeating and repeating. Because if you all, if you trust Him, everything, you will not think of it. You will leave it, leave it to Him. Amen. Amen. So that is near to the truth that the devil is uh, wants you to think. The devil wants you to think that if I think and think and think and think of this problem, I might figure out later what to do. I might solve it. Uh, think of a solution later of what am I going to do with this problem. It's just near the truth, but that's not the truth, that's a lie. If you pray and pray, if you pray and pray and pray and leave it to God, that will solve your problem. Not to think and think and think and think. Amen. Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. Jesus is the head of our church. He carries our burden as a high priest. He says there, Ephesians 1, verse 22 to 23. And he put all things, God put all things under Jesus' feet and gave him as the head over all things to the church, which is his body to the fullness of him who fills all in all. He will fill that. All. We understand all, right? All means all. Five. A refuge is uh, lifting up a standard to lift up lift up to a standard a refuge is our escape 
God is our escape and the Bible is our only standard. Okay, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12 to 14. It says there, Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. In lighter word, if anyone thinks that he can, he will uh, straight fall. If anyone thinks that he can, he will fall straight. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide, pro provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. If you remember the first commandment, you shall have no other God before me. You shall love the Lord your God with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your, your soul. So it says here that flee from idolatry. Because if we set anybody before us, if, if we uh, set a refuge besides God, that is an idol. That is a God, small g, before us. If we set our... our uh, work more high before God if we set somebody higher before God that became our God small g okay don't think that you stand by yourself and you did it because you're making yourself an idol so you have to trust your refuge you have to trust God because he will make an escape so whatever the, 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 the world is telling us, if it's inside the Bible, we will follow it. But if it's not, we will not follow it. Okay, six, this is the last, but I got three more, six more points to give you, but that's the last one. Residence or a den or dwelling place. Dwelling place. God is our dwelling place dwelling place and when you are in that dwelling place that he will continue an eye on you what it, what that means when you are in god's divine protection in god's secret place in the presence of the lord god's dwelling place you will he will watch over you proverbs 15 3 says uh Proverbs 15, 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on evil, on the evil and the good. Job 14, 16 says, for, for then you would number my steps, you would not keep watch over my sin. So God is watching over you. And when you humble yourself, you go in His dwelling place, you go under His protection, you obey Him. Job 14, 16 says, for then you would number my steps. You would tell me what to do. God will tell us what to do. And you would not keep watch over my sin. You will not uh, remind. God will not remind you, oh, this is what you did. For God, when you confess it, He forgets it. Uh, the scripture says, I have removed your transgressions from you. God already took that away and whatever He took away, He will not bring back to you because He will be an injustice God, unjust God when He does it. So Hebrews 18, this is very beautiful to me and I believe we all, we all need this. Hebrews 8 verse 12, For I will be merciful toward their iniquities. This is us. I will be merciful toward their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. If you would just humble to God. The, the, the song says, uh, I'm trading my sorrow. You will trade it before God. I'm trading my pain. Jesus not only paid us, redeemed us, but He also paid our pain, our shame. Everything you have right now, that has been that has been paid. What you need is repentance. What is repentance? Is, is it kneeling or crying? You know, Repentance is humbling yourself before God and changing your way of thinking. And God wants to wash your thinking. Repentance is changing your thinking about God. God is not uh, 
worrying about your sin. God is worrying and waiting, just waiting, open arms. When will you become back the prodigal son? God, uh, the prodigal son, he, the, the father did not tell his son when he comes back anything. But he is waiting for that long time. He is just waiting over the horizon and looking for his son when he will become back. The Father is just waiting for us. We just need to humble ourselves. See, I will remember your sin no more. The devil just wants us to think that maybe God will not accept me when I go to him. No, that's not true. So, now I'll give you the results of choosing the wrong refuge. The results of choosing wrong refuge. Number one, it uh, creates distance between you and God. Distance. For example, my husband is driving and I am beside him. And my husband saw a beautiful lady and he looked, he, he had stiff neck overlooking that beautiful lady. It, does it create, does it create a physical distance? No. Maybe when, when, how fast is the car, it will create distance. But I'm talking about, as a bride of Christ, Christ is our husband, and we are the wife of Christ, the bride of Christ. We will, we will uh, create distance in, in emotion. So as, as, as a husband, of course, he is grief. He is burned. He is hurt. So, as a, you know, brother and sister, your husband and wife, when you quarrel, sometimes the, the husband on the left facing the left, the wife facing the right. Distance of emotion. Okay? We create distance. God did not go, but we go far away. Sometimes we feel, we felt that, sometimes we felt that uh, I, I cannot feel the presence of God anymore. I'm not blessed in this place anymore. Because we create distance. Because of disobedience. Because of sin. But as I told you, God is just waiting open arms. And He will remember our sins no more. Second, it will bring us disappointment. The devil wants to do everything to uh, bring us to a wrong refuge. To, for us to choose wrong refuge. So he will tell us, you come here, uh, I will comfort you. Come here, this is your comfort. Okay? So what the result, the disappointment brings depression. What is depression? In, in biblical terms, depression is a person who turned to a wrong refuge for many years. These are the people who turned to a wrong refuge for many years. Okay, so... It will cause us delay. It will cause us uh, thinking that don't go to God because He is mad at you. No, He is not. If you just humble yourself, He is able to forgive you and to wash and to forget everything that happens. So God loves you because of who He is, not because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. Amen. That's a beautiful song. Destruction. Third, it will bring destruction to us. Second Chronicles 16, verse 12 to 13. Do you have that, brother? Asa, Asa, as a king of Judah, he has severe disease. Yet he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians. Who has, who has we need to seek first? It is the Lord. Lord, I know you can heal me. So, it, there is nothing wrong of seeking physician, seeking doctor, because this body needs uh, maintenance from this earth. If, if you have that thinking that, yes, God can heal miraculously, but God can heal using the medicine. God can heal using all His creation. This is the biblical uh, analogy. So, we have, it, it will bring us destruction if we choose uh, wrong refuge rather, God, rather than seeking God first. Okay, destruction. 
So now I, I will end in this. I will give you the, the Psalms, verse 46, 1 to 2. I'll give you the uh, result of choosing God as your refuge. Choosing Jesus as your refuge. Okay, let's go to Psalms, verse 1 to 2, 46, 1 to 2. God is our refuge. One, it will give you strength. He will give you strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. God, when you choose Him as your refuge, He will give you strength. God is our refuge and strength. Okay. Uh, if you choose, this is if you choose God as your refuge. Choosing God as your refuge. I'll give you some examples of uh, our refuge. Many of us choose uh, choose Maybe some of us choose sweets as a refuge. When you have a problem, you eat sweets. Uh, if you have a problem, we turn to food. We eat so much when we have problems. Or maybe if I only have this money, I can solve this problem. If I only have visa, I, I can solve all my problems. If sometimes ice cream or make sometimes self-exaltation, we exalt ourselves so that uh, nobody can see our weaknesses. That's, that's a refuge, that's an idol. That's somebody before God, something before God. Alcohol, uh, cigarette, or coffee, caffeine inside of it. Some, uh, some are wine, they are addicted to wine. You know the difference between, di wine is biblical, you can take some. But the difference of the wine in Jesus' time the, the percent of alcohol is point just 21 something something but now it is like there is there is a wine that is 70% proof so see the difference you can drink in Jesus time 20 glasses of wines and will not affect your thinking but as a Christian or unbeliever if you drink wine it will really affect your brain your whole body so the, the difference is I, I got one colleague, they, they are telling me like Nagpaibu ba? Ano ba ito? Nagpaingit? They are telling me that uh, we drink wine last night and this is the wine. Can I see? Then they show the wine, it is 70% proof. And then I make a joke, I said, Why you don't just buy green cross rubbing alcohol, same, same, 70% proof. <laughs> same alcohol proof and cheaper. Yes, that, that's the difference between the wine in Jesus' time. That's why he said that. That's why uh, Timothy, Paul said to Timothy, you can drink a little bit of wine. That's for your stomach. Jesus is against drunkenness. That you will make alcohol as your refuge. Or the wine as your refuge. Sometimes self-pity, we pity ourselves. Or hobbies, we turn to hobbies when we have trouble. Busyness, we make ourselves busy. This is my weakness, chocolates. So for me, like when I'm tired in, from the work, like the chocolate is talking to me. Do you have a bad day? <laughs> Eat me, <laughs> something like that. So this is a refuge, this is God before us. Immorality or entertainment, shopping. Self-indulgence or self-promotion. I did this, I did that. To cover up everything. So in people, sometimes we go to people. We trust everything or everything to people. But uh, we make somebody our God before us. God before us. So our mind, sometimes it became our refuge. It became our, our idol, the minds. Oh, uh, this is what I should do. This is the only thing that I would believe. What's in your mind? So fantasy and many, many more. These are the... And this will not... If you choose this as your refuge, it will not give you strength. This only God will give you strength. Number two. Number two point is... Uh, Psalms 46 verse 1 to 2. A very present help in trouble. There is, there is strength when you choose God as a refuge. Number two, there is help. Do you believe that? There is help. Not only help, but a very 
a very uh, meaning there is so much help when you turn to God and emphasize not only a very but a very present now now a very present help now if you turn to God you will get help maybe you don't see it but God is touching people God is using everything he has to help you because you believe in him you turn to him a very present help why God is a very present help because in, in our trouble why God is a very present help I, I, my my kidney is very present with me my kidney is inside of me okay. God is a very present help because he is inside of you that's why he can help you right now right now a very present help in times of trouble I remember last one joke uh, I remember uh, we, we New Year time, I ate in the I ate in the work, I ate in the house, and I ate in uh, somebody else's house. So I ate so much that night. So I tell I tell sister, sister, we walk so that it will burn, all burn, all will burn. And my tummy is very present with me. You understand, right? It's so painful <laughs> that I need to rush home. My tummy is very present with me. It tells me, if you go to the toilet. That's, that's what God means. He is very present in us, just in us. Just one, one call. Every, everyone, anyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. Not only eternal salvation, but right now salvation. He will save you in everything, every circumstances that you have. Last one. We will not fear. There is no fear. One, there is strength. If you choose God as your refuge. Second, there is help. Third, there is no fear. Anything that there is fear that is not from God. Amen. But fear of the Lord, of course, that's number one to us. First John 4, verse 18, 19. There is no fear in love. If it is true love, if you really love, uh, in the psalm says there is no uh, no good effect if 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 you do a decision without with the fear of God or without fear. So first John says there is no fear in love because if you fear that's not from God. The love of God is not perfected in us because God is love. First John four eight God is love. Therefore if, it, if God is love. God is very present in us. We have love, right? We have love. But I want to end in this uh, a ERV, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. I, I wanted to ask to know what is love? What is really love in, 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 our, in our thinking? This is, this is love. I, I wanted to, to emphasize what is really love in us. If we think that we love somebody, yet it is not here, that's not love. Okay? One, love is patient and kind. Two, love is not jealous. Love is not jealous. Three, it does not brag and it is not proud. It is not proud. Love is not rude. It is not hard. When you hit somebody hard, or when you speak really hard to somebody, love is not rude. It is not selfish. Love is not selfish. And it cannot be made angry easily. Love cannot make angry, make anyone angry so easily. Love does not remember wrongdoings. Love does not remember. Now, if we go, if I go to my house and I tell, this is the, this is what he does, this is what this is somebody, this is she, this is no. Love does not remember wrongdoings. Wrong done again.
against it. Love is never happy when others do wrong. I'm not happy when somebody does wrong. You are not happy when I did wrong. Amen? That's why we rebuke, we correct with love. Okay? But it is always happy with the truth. Love never gives up on people. It never stops trusting. So, I, because I heard this, sometimes I heard this to people, I cannot trust anybody anymore. I cannot trust you anymore. I cannot trust some, this, this person anymore. You have to continue trusting. Because the Lord is continue, continuously trusting you. Okay, last, love never loses hope. And it never quits. Has there something in your mind or in your heart that you are turning to before God? Or do you, do you want to quit on serving God? Do, do you want to... I need you to stand up and please some music behind me. Have you turned... Or in your troubled times do you have these things that you are turning to before the Lord like you know when when you're in trouble I want to drink when you're in trouble you think I'm like this I will do like this that's an idol God is continuously trusting us to his work however small that work it is God is continue in trusting us because not of what you are doing not of what you've done but because of who he is he still loves you you may turn you may turn to alcohol when you have a problem you may turn to wrong refuge you may turn to your friends or you may turn to anything else before God. Addiction, you may turn to sex, you may turn to immorality, you may turn to uh, you may turn to your coffee, you drink so much coffee, you eat so much food when you have a problem, or you you drink alcohol, you do addiction, you take something else so that you will not you will forget your problem. When when your wife hurts you, when your husband hurts you, you will go to another woman, you will go to another man. Not because you did that, God will not accept you anymore or God is angry with you. He is just waiting for us to say, God, I am sorry. He is just waiting for you to tell, uh, God, I wanted to say sorry to him or to her, but I can't. Lord, I can't. I cannot eat my pride. That is a refuge. God is our only refuge, okay? So if there's anyone in you that needs a prayer in any troubles of their lives, we are calling you. The leaders will pray for you. And uh, the Holy Spirit will minister to your heart. He will give you peace. Okay? You may go to the front. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will draw every person that leads you today right now. In Jesus' name. So God is calling you today. God is calling you to make Him as your refuge. He will minister to you. I promise you, God will if you will just humble yourself you are not a bad person when you go 
blessings if you will only obey. If you will only obey. I want you to sing through it all. Lightly. So the Holy Spirit will minister.
continue to be in the presence of God this morning. As we are now in the first Friday of the month, we are celebrating the Communion Friday. And uh, before we celebrate, I would like to ask two of our elders, Brother Jos and Brother Asher, please come forward to assist me in this uh, communion. Brother Jos is not here, I would like to request Brother Rebecca. Come forward to assess. Church, we have two uh, different ordinances for the church. First ordinance is the baptism, which we are doing every time we have uh, new uh, converts and we have decided to baptize with the church. And the second ordinance of the church that we are practicing is the communion. I would like to read to you from Second Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians, chapter eleven, verse twenty-two to twenty-six. The word of the Lord says, "For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke." broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till, till he comes. Therefore, whosoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let us examine, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks damnation or judgment to himself not discerning the Lord's body. Church taking the communion is, a, is not a dangerous act. Amen. This is not a curse for us. Rather, it is a blessing. But the Bible says, those who eat in an unworthy manner is guilty or be condemned by taking the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, the question is, how to drink it worthily? How to drink it worthily? Paano natin tatanggapin ang, ang mga elements na ito? Ang katawan ni Cristo, which symbolizes uh, the bread, and the cup, which is the wine, symbolizes the blood of Jesus Christ. Paano natin tatanggapin ito na tayo ay karapat-dapat? Kung titingnan po natin mga kapatid, lahat tayo ay hindi karapat-dapat. But because of the Lord Jesus Christ, who became our Savior, who substituted us, in behalf of us who died on the cross, we became worthy. Now, we need to know and we need to discern the Lord's body, what it means. So the body of Christ is the one who was being, uh, the, the body of Christ suffered at the cross. Amen. It was the, his body, it was his bruise, it was his wounds, it was his, uh, uh, all the suffering of his body. That is symbolizes the body which we are going to take this morning. And in, in Psalms 53 it says, uh, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And by His stripes we are healed. Meaning, brothers and sisters, the body of Christ that was wounded at the cross, it will bring us healing. Amen. It will bring us healing, not only in our physical body, but also in our spiritual life. It will bring us healing. Now, if you know it, and we should know also what is the meaning of the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ is the blood that was shed at the cross to remove all our sins, to wash our sins away. So if you know this truth, if you know about the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, what it means to you, then you are worthy to receive of this bread and the cup. Amen. So before we are going to, uh, while we are singing this song, I would like to play this uh, song, Word is the Lamb. And the elements will be distributed to you. You take one pair, one 
a piece of bread and, and a cup and we will join together in taking of this uh, Holy Communion as, the, as we remember the Lord's Supper of Jesus Christ. before God as if God is standing in front of you right now and what would it be when the Lord asks you why am I going to accept you this morning it is the Lord who searches our hearts it's the spirit who searches our hearts and this morning allow, it, allow the spirit to search our hearts this morning and as we stand in the presence of God, let us meditate upon His presence. <coughs> I would like to request Brother Raymond to pray for the bread. Lord, For I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take it this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me let us partake of the bread I would like to request Brother Usher to pray for the white. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is the blood of symbol. This is the wine of symbol of your blood, my Father. Because this is shed on the third day. For our deliverance, for our healing, and blessing, wisdom, and understanding. I thank you and give us all, for, forgive us to our all sins. My Father, I request you to accept 
how we are in, in you, Lord Father, you are in us and we are in you. Forgive us and give us a blessing. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the same manner, he took also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the wine. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you, Lord God, that as we remember your suffering at the cross. As often as we eat of the bread of God and drink of this cup, we remember that you're suffering. We remember, oh God, your death and your resurrection. We thank you, Father God, because your body, Lord God, that was wanted, oh God, at the cross, will bring us healing, Lord God, of our physical body and also, Lord God, for our spiritual being, oh God. And you want us, Lord God, to be healthy Christians, oh God. Not only physically, but also, Lord God, spiritually, Lord God. And I pray, Father God, we, because we, I thank you, Lord God, because of your body, Lord God. Without it, Lord God, Lord God, our body will be in corruption, Lord God. Our body, Lord God, will be in total sickness and infirmities, oh God. And our soul, Lord God, will be in total corruption, Lord God, of the flesh. Thank you, Lord God, even for the wine, Lord God, that symbolizes your blood, Lord God. Through that blood, Lord God, that was shed on the cross, you have said, Lord God, that all our transgressions have been washed away, Lord God. And you have removed it from us, Lord God. And remember, Lord God, we remember today, Lord God, that we, as your people, we are being set free, Lord God, from the bondage of sin, Lord God. We are being set free, Lord God, from anything that the Lord, the, 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 the sin of this world that is dragging us down, Lord God. But I thank you, Father God, for your blood. That once and for all, you shed it at the cross to remove the sins of the world, Lord God. And it is salvation, Lord God, for them and for those who will believe. Thank you, Father, for today, Lord God, because your your greatness lord god your majesty lord god lord is being uh enjoyed lord god by your people we look up to you lord god our god the only god who we serve oh lord who is worthy to receive all praises and worship all adorations of god from your people thank you father for today lord god this in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. amen. May we sit in the presence of God. Amen. Let's give Jesus a clap offering again. I believe you can do better than that. You are giving Jesus, the King of Kings, a clap offering and you are sitting down on your seat. in what I normally call the business time. We are in the presence of the King of Kings to reverence him again once again, to appreciate him with our substance. This is a new year, my brothers and sisters. And I believe that we ought to commit every other resources that we have for the year into the hand of the Most High. Giving and tithing should be a personal thing, a personal conviction. I don't believe anyone should force you or tell you how or when to give. Giving to our Lord is like transacting a business 
with the most influential businessman in the world. I call him the most influential businessman in the world. Because there's no business you do with him that is not profitable. Some of the world business can crush. Even the shares you buy do crash. But the most high, the one I call the Jehovah Jireh never lacks. When you do business with him, it's always profitable. Come with me to the book of Acts chapter 20, verse 35. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. It says, I have shown you all things. How that so laboring ye ought to support the weak. And to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. You might be wondering, or be saying in your heart, Oh, it is those that have that do give. But I want to reassure you with the word of God in Philippians 4, 19, which says, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So do not be afraid whether you have or you don't have today. The Jehovah Jireh is here to bless you. Now let's take that bold step to start doing business with the most influential business man in the world. Let's give to the King of Kings.
<laughs> Everlasting King of Glory, the ancient of days, the lily of the valley, the bright morning star. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, we give you all the adoration. We say thank you, Lord, for the opportunity you've given to us once again. In the new year, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Even from the much you've given to us, for this little we've brought before you. Lord, we say be thou exalted, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, we know you as the Jehovah Jireh. And you've told us in your word that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Our Father, our King, we pray this morning that whatever will take us to be more to be blessed in giving, Lord, give it unto us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, this year we shall not lack any good thing. Because for what you is young men to lack and suffer hunger, but they that wait upon the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Lord, according to your word, Lord, that you shall supply all our needs according to your riches in glory. Lord, whatever we are in need, provide for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. From where this world came out from, you shall replenish us in million folds in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the answer to our prayers. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Everyone, church, uh, we think every Thursday night from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. venue, Almaria Mall, third floor in this party hall. Uh, lunch fellowship, after church service at Capital Park, all are all invited. And church service will start at exactly 10, 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. every Friday. And additional announcement, uh, we are happy to invite you to those who have decided to share their talents, like in playing instruments or can sing with harmony. Our music ministry is open for registration. Please feel free to approach this student our music director or sister hotel. Thank you. Uh, what is in here? This is the logo of the United Christian Fellowship. This uh, plaque of appreciation is hereby presented to United Christian Fellowship Abu Dhabi for being united in the body of Christ. We thank you for your sincere we thank you for your sincere dedication and commitment to serve our Lord and His people. Given this 29th day of December 2017 at Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. And this is the verse, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Ephesians 4.3, signed by Pastor Jesse R. Laforga, local pastor and senior pastor of Jesus is Alive Ministry Abu Dhabi. So, we are a member of the body of Christ, so we expect that uh, maybe in the future we'll have uh, joint fellowship. Amen? Amen. So, we have joint fellowship with other churches. We have happenings this coming 2018. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I would like everyone to please rise as we come to the Lord in prayer for the closing prayer and benediction. Dear God, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of God in being able to share in this time together, Lord God, with our brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord God, that we have connected with heaven, O God, and your promises, Lord God, is overflowing, Lord God, in our lives. Lord, thank you for the time, Lord God, to rest and join, Lord God, together with brothers and sisters, Lord, in the church. Time to reflect, Lord God, for all the things, O God, that you have done, and breath, Lord God, the wonder of your love, the majesty, Lord God, of your kingdom, and the excitement, Lord God, that is being brought about, Lord God, by our joining, Lord God, with you. Thank you, Father God, for your goodness and your faithfulness to the church, Lord God, that we are about, Lord God, to celebrate again our anniversary this coming February. Thank you, Lord God, for your faithful to the United Christian Fellowship, Lord God. The body of Christ, Lord God, is, uh, is here right now, Lord God, in Abu Dhabi, Lord, to unite, Lord, your people, your children, oh God. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness, Lord God, to the church. Let's raise our hands for the benediction. May God, who puts all things together, makes all things whole, 
who made a lasting mark through the sacrifice of Jesus, the sacrifice of blood that sealed the eternal covenant, who led Jesus, our great shepherd, up and alive from the dead, now put you together, provide you with everything you need to please him, make us an into what gives him most pleasure by means of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, all glory to the Father, to the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For in Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Amen.